Hi everybody, this is Angus Campbell here. It's uh, Thursday the 8th of March uh, 2019. Um, so, carrying on with the uh, impetus uh, now again to get cracking in the garage uh, this year. Uh, then today what uh, I'm going to do is uh, fit the uh, main stand to the uh, A70 Lightning. And this will enable me then to, uh, to place the frame on the stand, put a support um, underneath the uh, front forks which will then enable us to be in a position to uh, think about um, completing the brakes on the wheels and installing the wheels so we'll then have uh, a, a rolly chassis. So I'm here with uh, replete with uh, a cup of coffee um, we'll do a bit of tidying up here as it's a little while since I worked on, on the bike um, secure the, uh, the parts just to fit uh, the main stand and then we'll get cracking. Uh, but in the meantime as well I'll just do a, uh, uh, a quick session on uh, A70 Lightning documentation uh, in case uh, some of you might be uh, interested in that to, uh, to enable us to, to understand uh, exactly what parts are different on the A70L from the A65 and I can imagine, uh, and as, you, as you can imagine the most of that is, is to do with uh, the uh, engine, the engine only. So uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so here we are um, up on the bench, just to have a, uh, a quick look at the uh, 870 uh, Lightning documentation. And some of you may have seen that um, there have been uh, a number of examples over the years advertised of um, this 1972 replacement part list, uh, which you'll notice states 650 and uh, 750 twins. And if you look in the book itself, then it's all absolutely bog standard A65 until you get to a supplement page towards the uh, the end of the book. And here it is, which is one page on uh, on the A70 model identifying the exclusive items that relate primarily to uh, the crank, the pistons. And the uh, the plain bush main bearing, but also importantly as well the oil pressure relief valve, uh, which has a uh, a different setting on this bike as well. Uh, in fact, the uh, the con rods are exactly the same as A65, but are uh, steel capped rather than alloy capped. But they're they're exactly the same profile and length as the A70 is a, uh, a long stroke motor so therefore the crank is different but importantly the pistons are different as well because the um, the uh, gudgeon pin sits lower uh, in the piston is that the right way around? or oh, no it's probably no it's higher in the piston sorry the gudgeon pin I think has to sit higher in the piston so uh, to allow the clearance for the uh, the longer stroke uh, within the standard barrels and, and head configuration which are exactly the same as the A65. Um, so that's the uh, 1972 parts book for 650 and 750 twins. Um, I've seen one or two of those about as I say um, they're not too difficult to get hold of if, you, if you're patient but also um, in addition to the standard 1971 um, 650 A65 parts book there was um, a supplement a simple supplement printed for the A70 twin for 1971 um, and, and here it is and it's just uh, a, a couple of pages um, that are exactly the same as the uh, as a supplement in the uh, or the additional pages in the 1972 uh, parts book but it was uh, printed separately in 71 the reason why uh, it wasn't included within the standard 1971 book is obviously it was uh, uh, developed fairly late in the day for um, the the 71 
range and uh, didn't begin manufacturing of it until June 71 and obviously you're not far then from uh, uh, beginning 1972 production which normally began in September the year before. Um, so hence it was formally included in the uh, 72 replacements part list even though obviously it was never built. Ultimately in, uh, in the 1972 range it was dropped and uh, only 200 homologation models were manufactured in addition to one or two um, uh, prototypes. Uh, I've, not, I've never come across a, um, an, an owner's handbook for uh, an, an A70 twin um, so, and I don't know if one exists but obviously always on the, on the lookout and one of the things I, uh, I quite enjoy when going to, uh, to auto jumbles or to uh, the classic shows is actually looking through uh, original manufacturer's documentation so I've amassed quite a good collection of that for uh, a BSA for 1971 and at some point I'll do a separate video on that uh, because I've got some interesting quite scarce marketing material and other bits and pieces as well. So there we are uh, on the bench here so we'll get back to the bike but also just to say that we're, we're up against the next to the uh, the tank and um, obviously when you when you're doing sessions on, on restoring bikes and wanting to uh, to see how it might look upon completion then uh, sometimes you just can't resist sitting the tank on the frame so I think that might happen today as well but anyway let's uh, get uh, set up and we'll get the, uh, the main stand on first. Oh by the way one other thing I uh, forgot to mention is that um, I do have a, uh, a very good uh, immaculate copy of the um, one of the original uh, A65, 650, uh, 1971 uh, workshop manuals and um, the reason why I just dug this out is because I don't know about you, I, I always have a hell of a problem fitting main stance and side stand springs. I've got a, a, a technique that I use myself and there is some reference to it within the uh, uh, within the manual uh, which as you can see recommends uh, using a, a screwdriver with a stand in the up position uh, to lever the spring uh, onto the uh, lug on the frame itself. Um, I normally do it with the stand in the down position um, but if you read the uh, script against that figure on the on the next page uh, if I can get the right uh, there we are the right section excuse the shadow uh, then it mentions the uh, to engage the screwdriver up in the hook on the opposite end of the spring and lever in inverted commas the spring eye onto its frame anchorage peg. Well, I always have a bit of a problem, so uh, not much help really there. But um, what I tend to do is I do use a, a screwdriver to lever it on, but I tend to use a Phillips screwdriver because that then has. Uh, provides a bit of an indentation in the end of the screw but driver that can latch onto uh, the end of the lug rather than a flat ended screwdriver. But anyway, uh, let's see uh, how we get on with this. We'll get it done in the end but uh, no doubt uh, we won't get it done first time. Okay, so uh, I've moved the frame out a bit. Um, I've uh, just uh, set it up and rested it on, um, on a uh, a support with the um, front forks down on um, some material to uh, to prevent the, the uh, cap mounting studs from uh, from being damaged. So that uh, enables us to lean the frame forward to give us a bit of room uh, for the mounting lugs here. Uh, I'm using a uh, a GoPro camera now to uh, uh, to create these uh, videos, which gives us a nice wider angle but hopefully um, we'll also be able to uh, at least focus um, in uh, close enough so you can actually see some of the uh, uh, the detail. So the mounting lugs are on this um, frame spar here so if I set you up close enough hopefully you'll be able to see what's what's going on. got the uh, parts ready to go.
with a bit of crash bang wallop in the background. So, uh, so we've got the main uh, the main stand ready to go, powder coated in the uh, in the same colour as the frame. Uh, the correct way round is this way round, so that the uh, the main stand uh, lever is on the left hand side of the frame together with the uh, loop for uh, the loop for the spring the return spring um, the the main stand um, mounting is uh, is threaded so the pivot bolts uh, are shouldered uh, so therefore there's no washers required um, the threads the threads at the top let's get this the right way around if you can see it uh, the threads at the top here were masked and are nice and clean um, so to uh, to prevent powder coating covering them so they look good but we'll we will do a test fit of the uh, of the bolts before uh, we fit it uh, and also I've got some grease handy as well so we can uh, grease the uh, the pivot points as well so let's test the uh, the bolts in the threads first to make sure they uh, they fit. Didn't get them out of the bag. So what we've got then are uh, two shouldered bolts uh, with. Uh, lock nuts or stiff nuts, they look to be stiff nuts to me uh, and then a brand new spring which looks very short and strong so this is this is going to be fun so uh, first of all we'll just test the uh, the fit of the bolts little tiny bit of grease the bolts screw in from the uh, inside of the stand, so this way around, drop it, had to happen. I don't know if any of you uh, subscribe to uh, Musty One's channel, but I think he refers to that as a launch. Alright, let's try that again. Join that side. Might need to just do a little bit of cleaning up. Oh, it's fine on that side. Okay, that one's good. Screwing in by hand, all the way through. Fantastic. Try again on the other side. Might just need to do a little bit of cleaning. Here we go. We're away. It's a little tight, but uh, let me just get the spanner. What's that look like? Three eight. So it's going through lovely now. I 
all the way through by finger. So what we'll now do then is grease, put a, a light bit of grease on the two uh, inner surfaces. Something that's usually forgotten during a service is greasing the uh, is greasing the stands. Just very light grease. And then we can do the first first fit. Trying not to knock you. Quite tight. Right, bear with me a second while I just do uh, a bit of fiddling around. It's going to be. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a quite a nice uh, snug fit. So I might just have to give it uh, a little bit of a tap. Uh, but I'll leave it ring anyway. Let's uh, let's see what happens. Sorry. Right, I'm just going to uh, dress this a little with the file. And it's just a bit too uh, tight. And we've obviously got uh, powder coat on there as well, so I'll just dress that a little, little to enable me to uh, uh, to begin pressing that in. Uh, but other than that, um, I don't mind uh, a tight fit at all, as long as the uh, the stand will return on its own against the uh, against the spring pressure. So in the background now, I'll just uh, give this a bit of file and I'll come back. Okay, we're back, having uh, done a bit of dressing with the uh, the bench grinder actually. So all I've done, as you can see, is just dress the. Uh, the top edge, just taking a little bit off that. Um, I have taken a little bit of metal off it as well as the uh, paint was, but it was quite uh, quite tight. So we'll now grease up again, having cleaned it. Uh, I've already test fitted it, so it does tap on nicely. And 
and we'll have another go now. No doubt, now I'm recording while doing this, it won't fit. Just touch the far side on the lug first, tap, and away, away we go. We're on. So the next thing to do is line up the holes. And I thought I had a screwdriver here to do that, but it would appear not. Let's see if we can just die it up. It is actually moving quite freely now. There we go on the far side. It's pretty much lining up. So if we take one of the bolts. Nearly there. Patience is a virtue. Close. There we go. Bit of pressure with some jiggling and it centres. Still threads in by hand, which is nice. I don't want to thread it too far just yet because uh, there's limited room to uh, to get the lock nut on, on the other side, so you have to do that in parallel. However, we can now let that drop, like so, and put the other bolt in. Where she goes again, finger tight. Sorry, finger loose. That's nice. And it's popped through the other side. I'm aware that you probably can't see this, uh, but I'm going to allow the bolt to start threading the nut on the other side, so the nut's almost in situ. 
so I can then tighten the bolt up all the way up to its shoulder and then hold the head while I uh, tighten the stiff nut on the other side. Might be thinking, well, why not use a socket and a ratchet? There's just not very much room, um, but the uh, the bolt is nice and free in the thread, so it's uh, not taking much to do this. Stiff nuts all the way up. to the stiff end, so I will need to we'll need to secure it if I'm able. Can't quite get the ring onto it so I haven't used the open jaw. Just need to check that nut. Oh, there you go. It's not three eighth. Must be. Sorry, not five eighths. Five eighths. It must be uh, nine sixteen. Sorry, eleven sixteen. We'll get there in a minute. 11.16, sold. Okay, the uh, the nuts tied up all the way to its shoulder. The stand still moves nice and freely. So I'll just hold the bolt head now and uh, tighten up the stiff nut. I know you're probably thinking you haven't put a washer on there. Well, there is no washer, as per the parts book. I suppose the reason being is that we're not doing up this stiff knot tight, absolutely rock tight against the, the stand itself. Because it is a stiff knot and not relying upon a doesn't rely need to rely upon a spring washer. And believe you me, it, it's stiff. So that's good. Just a light nip up just to prevent the uh, bolt from moving too far. Just very lightly tightened up. That's that one done. Okay, now we'll do the one on the far side. Preparation for the fun bit to come.
one. Stand is beautiful. Very little movement. Lugs haven't been damaged in its hard life in the past. I'll just again do the stiffen up the back. This one's not quite so stiff, which is good. Okay, there we are. Just nipped slightly and uh, checking both both the nuts, they're both more than fully on to uh, the bolt. So there we are, job done. Now at the moment, that stand, when it's up, is not actually stopping against the flats which are the other side of the uh, main stand lugs because I've got uh, I've still got a blanking plate and bolt to uh, seal off the uh, oil bearing part of the frame so it didn't uh, get any powder or crud into it uh, but actually I can remove that while we're here because that looks as though it's It's not 9 16th, it's uh, half. I'm really good with my sizes. Take the uh, the old bearing spine base plate and the, and the gauze filtering side off because this is the uh, the old one that came with the bike, uh, which is in dreadful condition. So I had no qualms about keeping it installed on the frame to uh, protect the uh, internal oil cavity from being first blasted and then powder coated. I'm just, uh, bear with me, I'm just going to take this base off now just so I can check if the main stand does in the race position be secured by its stop and then doesn't uh, necessarily base the, uh, uh, hit the base of the frame. Wouldn't do too much damage, but it'd be rattling about. Just launch the spanner. You might wonder why I take so much time on these damn main stands and fittings etc and that's because uh, I used to have a, a Triumph Hurricane for very many years before I decided to concentrate my collection around the grey framers of 71 and we could never trace a strange clanging sound on the bike when I went over bumps and ultimately we found that uh, after years and years of using the bike, because when I was riding it I couldn't hear it, but people riding behind me could hear it. And we found it, it was the main stand was, uh, was moving slightly because the spring was losing some of its tension. Um, and instead of 
hitting the stops on its... Uh... Uh, apologies everyone, the GoPro uh, camera um, uh, battery uh, was fully discharged so uh, the video stopped abruptly so I was just explaining that um, the problem that we ultimately find with the Triumph Hurricane uh, stand making some strange noises was the fact that the uh, spring tension had been slightly compromised and the stand was moving a little, it was staying up okay but moving a little over over bumps and uh, but it was uh, actually uh, clanging against the silencer bracket rather than the uh, the stops uh, on the uh, frame lugs uh, which is one of the reasons then why I always uh, I always check check these extensively to make sure they're coming up against the stop and not the stand which this one is and that's fine so uh, the next challenge is to uh, fit the main stand uh, spring and uh, while I hadn't noticed that the uh, the GoPro camera wasn't recording then I, I was doing a bit of test fitting so we've determined which way around the spring uh, the spring itself goes so the larger the slightly extended loop at this end goes actually on the uh, the the stand loop itself down the bottom here and I think I prefer it to be that way around and uh, then we've got to uh, extend it up to that uh, lug which from here doesn't appear to be too much of a problem but we've got at least an inch there so we're going to need um, a pretty damn good uh, strong sorry you're out of shot pretty damn good strong Yeah, that's better. Pretty damn good strong uh, screwdriver or the like uh, to lever that up. Um, I hate this job. Um, it always takes ages and several attempts. Um, so I'm going to actually complete this uh, off camera because uh, I'll need to try various tools because of the restricted space that we have to, to lever this. Um, and also I'll need to attack it from uh, or attempt to uh, try and attack it from uh, various angles to get this on uh, but I'll bring you back uh, as soon as I've done that okay everyone last take uh, for this I hope so uh, I got the job done and it it wasn't it wasn't too bad uh, but because of the restricted space then uh, I had to uh, put the frame uh, onto its side onto a protective cover so it gave me plenty of room to lever the spring into place and uh, also uh, I had to uh, turn the spring the other way up as well so that the more elong elongated loop uh, is at the top on the frame lug because it was a physical impossibility for the smaller loop um, to uh, to flick over onto the lug using the screwdriver technique. Um, I got it on in probably the, uh, the third or, or fourth attempt. Um, and also, um, I did get it on um, with the stand in the up position as recommended within the manual. So um, hats off to them. It did prove to be uh, easier to do that, i.e. the spring didn't have to be extended quite so far. Uh, and also it gave you a better um, plane in which to, uh, to to lever the spring into position without uh, other frame members getting in the way, namely the uh, um, the down tubes, uh, sorry, the loop tubes. Um, so, um, apologies that you didn't see it. Uh, there wasn't any swearing or blaspheming at all, um, I can assure you. Um, uh, but anyway, we've got the job done, and uh, now it's on its main front, uh, main stand secure. Um, and at the front, we've just propped uh, propped the forks up, um, but that then will I'll now make it easier to. Uh, I think I'll probably fit the uh, the front mud guard uh, first, because otherwise, the uh, if you put the wheel in first, the tire t tends to get in the way of uh, mounting the. Uh, 
the front mudguard on on um, those lugs on the fork tubes there. Uh, it's difficult to get the bolts in with the clamps, uh, but I'll show all that in a, in a, the probably uh, probably the next video uh, when we'll um, we'll fit the uh, the front mudguard, and also we'll uh, we'll finish off uh, the top end here and um, put the other headlight bracket on and possibly put the headlight on as well. Um, so we've got the job done. Um, as always, there's there's a little tiny bit of touching up to do uh, on the end end of the lug here. Uh, there's a little scratch there, um, but uh, other than that, not not too bad. Stands fitted very well. There's no no side to side play in it whatsoever. Uh, it moves very freely, uh, greased up. Uh, so yeah, quite a long job and pleased with that. And I must hasten to add that with respect to these main stand springs. Uh, again, as uh, as I referred to before, and as Musty One would say, these uh, these can be launched into oblivion, and it did go once or twice. So I always wear um, eye uh, eye safety protection as well. Um, never take your eyes for granted. Um, and as I mentioned early on, then I I just had to do it. So there we are. The tanks, tanks on just sat uh, on it on its rubbers. It looks um, in that position to be um, slightly tilted uh, downwards at, at the front, uh, but I think um, I think that's okay. Might move forward a little bit anyway. But it was just to get an impression, uh, but also just to um, um, to demonstrate the fact that the uh, the frame dove grey is distinguishable from the uh, the bottom half of the tank in uh, in old English white, um, but it looks pretty good. Pleased with that, and so we're now in a position to get cracking with um, getting this into a, a rolling chassis in, in pretty short order, really. Anyway, with the tank on, obviously it's nearly done. So anyway, hope uh, you've enjoyed that. It's been a little long-winded, I know, but um, I I try and uh, Give you the whole story uh, without editing editing too much. Um, it means it's ended up as, a, as being a bit of a long one and a little bit disjointed as I've been flicking between the GoPro camera and uh, my my phone camera, both of which uh, have decided to die during the process. Um, but anyway, hope you find it uh, useful and uh, thanks very much for watching. Look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Bye bye.